Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you the daily Tesla report for Thursday, November 30th, 2023. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Share the content, if you would, with friends and colleagues. And check out WickedStocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the long bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube. That is eight a month that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five-day free trial up front with a Wickedstocks.com subscription. So sign up for Wickedstocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. On with the charts. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into it here with respect to the fact that um, we've been anticipating uh, and still are this 260.69 to 267.70 descending channel resistance, also convergence of this former channel bottom for the last few weeks following a settlement. I can show you in the daily chart above this long term speed line that is now at 208.92, well below the market. But I can kind of describe this. You know, you've got the July high. This speed line is based on the July high and the October low. It came into existence mathematically uh, once the October low was put in and we began to trade off of that. That speed line held the highs for over a week and then we closed above it about two, three weeks ago that set off a three to five week buy signal that is now an area in the 259.97 to 265.58 area, this descending band of channel resistance on the daily chart. Now, yesterday, we put out a new pullback high following the October low, only to close negative on the day. That is a slightly negative development, but I'm not going to read too much into it. I do think still that this 242.84 high settlement price from about a week and a half ago is still one that may well contain daily selling pressures. I mean, after all, it did contain Wednesday's lows. Uh, but if you look at the Wednesday uh, behavior, we put out a new pullback high and we closed negative on the day. That tells me we, well, how, how do I frame this? Um, we could quite easily actually gap below 242.84 uh, on Thursday morning. I don't know if we will or not, but 242.84 is still sort of your pivot point as we move through the rest of the week. Above which, I'm going to say by the end of next week or sooner, we should push into this targeted 259.97 to 265.58 region. And inversely, if we break 242.84, I'm not expecting 231.92 intraday, but it is certainly possible. What I am expecting is this rising channel bottom at 238.73. And it can contain initial intraday selling pressures, uh, possibly for the balance of the day. So the way I really need to nuance this is it is a settlement-based signal. And it would be a settlement today back below 242.84, I think does pivot us south to 231.92 uh, Friday, Monday. That would be the timing. Now, there is the chance, of course, that we break 242, open below 242.84 today, test 238.73. It holds... Uh, and then we trade up from there into the afternoon and wind up closing above 242.84. So we remain above the 242.84 level and still in reach by the end of next week of 259.97 to 265.58. But if we close below 242.84, that does set up a Friday-Monday test of 231.92. And on an intraday basis, once again, 238.73 uh, should be respected for its ability to contain intraday selling pressures, possibly through the balance of the day. And that is a possibility. You know, it is a subjective call, of course. Uh, but I, I'm going with 242.84 as our multi-day pivot point, not 238.73. So even if 238.73 holds, if we close below 242.84, that is your sign. Three to five day swing traders uh, should probably liquidate their long position if they are long now anticipating 265.58. 
Whether they go short or not down to 231.92 is another question. It's not going to take three to five days. It's going to take one to two days to fall to 231.92. This new channel bottom able to contain selling through next week. And once tested, we can round back up to this still targeted 259.97 to 265.58 region within one to two weeks of testing 231.92. Keep in mind that it was the settlement about two full weeks ago above this 208.92 speed line that set up a three to five week buy signal into the upper 250s to, to mid 260s as, as shown here. And I'll just say that holding above 231.92 will keep this area in reach over the next week or two. And if we close today below 242.84, you should expect 231.92 tomorrow, Monday at the latest, where we could bottom out through all of next week and from here turn back up into the 259.97 to 265.58 region. Let's talk upside. I don't want to neglect that. There is still this one-week channel top that we clearly pushed through on Wednesday, but certainly didn't close above. And I have it at 250.29. I think it is a solid intraday resistance area. It may well contain buying on an intraday basis and allow the market to fall back to 242.84 intraday. We could trade inside this 242.84 floor of support to 250.29 ceiling of resistance. If we happen to push through 250.29 today, we could, by the closing bell, actually test this target at 259.97 uh, uh, channel top. Uh, it, though I will say the likelier outcome, in my opinion, uh, with yesterday's new pullback high and negative settlement, that upper momentum has been neutralized just a bit and that um, it would require a settlement today above 250.29 for then clearly paving the way for a test Friday, Monday of this 259.97 to 265.58 targeted zone of meaningful longer term resistance. This area can absorb buying through the rest of the year and we can fall off of here into January trade. There would be a significant buy signal into Q1 into the first quarter if we did close above 265.58 but I'm not going to go there yet because we're not going to see that today let's go back to the downside today I'll just remind you that if we break or open today below 242.84 expect 238.73 and if we close today below 242.84 expect 231.92 uh, Friday tomorrow or Monday at the latest of course, there is the chance that if we break 238.73 today, we could actually test 231.92 today, where we could bottom out through next week. And above which, this 259.97 to 265.58 region remains a one to two week target. If we do close below 231.92 today, and I don't see that, but if so, I think we've got a good high into later, possibly through December trade. And the next one to two weeks, then likely to fall all the way back into this 208.19 level, which um, is a respectable multi-week support level that is presently in line with this longer term former speed line at 208.92 that we closed above a couple of weeks ago. But getting back to this, if tested over the next few weeks, and once again, it's not expected unless we close below 231.92. Uh, you know, it can absorb selling through the rest of the year and into January trade. Um, I will mention uh, that, you know, this is kind of the big picture. Assuming we reach our targeted zone of 259.97 to 265.58 over the next week or two, and it remains in reach over the next week or two above 231.92, it is some variation of this 208.19 that I think becomes a realistic three to five week downside rotational target. Uh, it wouldn't be 208.19. It would be in the 210s likely because it would be based on a different high. But I just want you to understand so sort of the big picture dynamic of what I would anticipate. Um, in terms of options traders, if we test 231.92 over the next day or two, you might reach for 260, 265 out of the money calls that don't expire for at least a month. This is a one to two, two to three week rally. You should go further out in time on your strike than the perceived time it takes to reach your objective because of the time decay element. 
Inversely, if we close below 231.92, you might reach for 210 out of the money puts that don't expire for at least once again a month. This could take the better part of two weeks. It might be three to five days. But once again, you want to preserve delta on the way down by eliminating theta, the time decay element from your option purchase. Um, I'll also say that if we test the um, mid 260s over the next week or so, uh, you might reach for 210, 215 out of the money puts that don't expire for at least several months because we're then in a three to five week bearish rotation back to uh, some variation of this 2808.19 channel bottom. I don't think there's really anything else that needs to be said. I will leave you this image. I think this is the most appropriate for the day itself. Um, please click like, share, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com. We do offer a five-day upfront free trial. You can check everything out that we do throughout the week, every single day, triple Q, spy analysis, so forth and so on. The most actively traded entities in the stock trading world, both for day traders, swing traders, and investors, the spy and triple Q offer amazing volume great day trade potential you should be trading it if you're not already if you're trading tesla every day or apple every day you can't disregard the spy and the triple q for profitable opportunities i'm going to leave it at that for thursday's tesla please click like share subscribe i'll be back tomorrow with friday's tesla you have a great day